Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we're going to be graphing these rational expressions, but focusing on holes or points of discontinuity. So, in order to figure out the holes or points of discontinuity, you first typically have to factor the expression. So if we did that, um, the bottom of this fraction would become x plus 4 and x plus 1 because that multiplies to 4 and adds to 5. And the top of the fraction, the first thing I would do is take out the negative, because who wants a negative x squared, and make that an x squared minus 1, which then would factor into x plus 1 and x minus 1, because that is what multiplies to 1 but adds to 0. Okay? Now here, whew, the x plus 1s will cancel out which means that this goes from being what would have been a vertical asymptote at negative 1 to now a hole. Any time an asymptote or something cancels out, you will have a hole at negative 1 or a point of discontinuity. That's just another name for it. All right, But we still have to graph what's remaining, which is, in this case, a negative x minus 1 over x plus 4. So all the same rules from the graphing part remain for this. So on this remaining part, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4, because the vertical asymptotes, you set the bottom equal to 0. And we still have a horizontal asymptote at leading coefficient over leading coefficient, because the beginning as well as this guy, have the same exponent. This is x squared and x squared. This is x and x, so it's going to end up being negative 1 over 1. And those are the key features that we need to graph. So if I graph my vertical asymptote at negative 4, and if I graph my horizontal asymptote at negative 1, I would have the rough part of my graph that I would need. Now, I do have a hole at negative 1. I'm going to pause for the hole at negative 1 because that point is very important because some teachers don't really care. They just want you to have a hole in your graph at negative 1, but other people would maybe want to know exactly where that hole is. Now, the key is that if you plugged it into the original function, you would be dividing by 0. But if you plug it into the new, like, function that you kind of simplified, you can actually plug it in, but we have to understand that in the original, if you plug in negative 1, it would be dividing by 0, and it wouldn't exist. So if we plug it into this newer version, because it canceled, it'll work. What is negative, negative 1 minus 1, I'm plugging it into here, over negative 1 plus 4? Well, that's, uh, that's a math problem. It would be negative, negative 2 divided by negative 3. See how it's over negative, not negative 3, positive 3. So negative negative 2 divided by positive 3 ends up being 2 thirds. So specifically, we have a hole at x is negative 1, but the y value is 2 thirds. Okay, that tells you two things. So when I was graphing these before, I wanted an additional point, and now I kind of have an additional point, but it's a very peculiar point called a hole. So I'm going to plot the point at negative 1 up here, oops, up here at 2 thirds, not this one, not that one, I filled that one in. So up here at 2 thirds, which is going to tell me that this graph is going to look something like this, where it has that hole in the graph at the 2 thirds, at negative 1 comma 2 thirds. But other than that, it looks like a normal, regular, rational graph. Now, if you graph these on a graphing calculator, the hole doesn't show up because it's so sp small that you just literally don't see it. So that is where graphing calculators will fail you because your graph would look like this, but the hole will look filled in. It looks like a smooth graph on a graphing calculator. Okay? Now, I got one more for you. This next one is a typical Algebra 2-esque, and sometimes college level, um, it, it's easier, but harder because it's easier, which is very funny. So let's say we had something like this. Let's say we got y equals x squared minus 3x minus 4 divided by 
uh, let's go with x plus 1. Okay. If I wanted to graph this, same thing is true where I need to factor the top of the expression. It would be x minus 4 and x plus 1 over x plus 1. And lo and behold, the x plus 1s cancel. Well, this is very peculiar because now we have left over an x minus 4. That is what we're supposed to graph. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is not a crazy looking graph. That is just a line. So yes, we still have a hole at negative 1 because if we set the x plus 1 equal to 0, you get the hole at negative 1. But what we're graphing doesn't involve vertical asymptotes. It doesn't involve horizontal asymptotes. It's a line. It is a boring, boring line with a y-intercept of negative 4 and a slope of up 1 over 1. And it would look like this. The issue is that this line has a big gaping hole at negative 1. So when you have that negative 1 part on the line, you need to put a hole there. It has a break in the line. And if you want to be more specific, which you should want to be more specific, you should plug in that number for x. So if we plug in the number for x, negative 1 minus 4 ends up being negative 5. So the hole should specifically be at negative 1, negative 5. And that is pretty much where I have it because the y-intercept was negative 4, and down here we're at negative 5. Okay? Now, if you tried plugging in negative 1 into the original function, it would not work. That is because this is still a hole. It is a point where the graph doesn't exist. So it only works in the simplified version. Okay? Um, sometimes they call it an uh, indeterminate form when you get like 0 divided by 0, which doesn't really work. All right? That's going to do it for this one. We still probably will have one more episode on graphing. And the graphing on the next episode will be, what do you do if you have not one, but two vertical asymptotes? And the answer is, cry a little bit, but it's, it's okay. It just involves a little bit more plugging in points to get the overall graph. All right? I will see y'all in the next one. See you later. Bye.